Welcome to Rick Scale Model Fix and the start of a brand new video build. This time we're going to be taking a look at Hobby 2000 or Hasegawa's P40N Warhawk. Now this kit is a bit notorious for being modular and some fit issues so it'll be interesting to see how we tackle those. I have done a review of this, it's up on the website so go and take a look at that. We'll lift the lid and dive straight in. So taking a quick look at the instruction book to just point out the opening statement that this kit has a bit of a challenging fit. And as you can see, Hasegawa have split the tool to try and coax out as many variants of the P40 as they can, the long tail, short tail, etc, etc. So what we'll do is I think we'll employ the usual method here and build up two complete fuselage halves. We can be waiting for the paint to dry on the cockpit when we've done that, so I think we'll just blast all this with interior green. Just while it's on the sprue, we'll prime it and then spray it, and that can be set aside to dry in. But unfortunately, what we can't do is have a look at these intake parts around the nose, because we need the fuselage halves together in order to do that. Once the fuselage is taken care of, obviously it's a straightforward build, putting all the undercarriage and wings and things on. So let's get started. So I've removed the fuselage parts from the sprue and just cleaned up the attachment points and we're just in the process of dry fitting everything together. So as you can see there's a lot of drop-in panels around the nose and also this tail end. So Hasegawa in their instruction book, or Hobby 2000 in this reboxing, would have you basically joining this to there. Now while the fit isn't that bad, it isn't that good either. So it's only mediocre to say the least. And it's going to need a lot of work just filling and sanding and rescribing. To try and get this a little bit better, what we can do is we can join the separate tail to the separate fuselage halves and work on the best joint we can on the side of the airframe. It's still going to need some sanding and filling and then we can tease this into place, get the spread to match and then quickly sand it, put a bit of Mr Surfacer in there. Now theoretically it's not a natural panel line in the real machine. If you really wanted to, you could leave the joint and just say it's a panel line. So we'll see what the results look like. It might be that we put a bit of filler in there and just rescribe these panel lines going across once we've got a reasonable joint. So looking at the fit, it's not the best. However, it's not that bad. And if we do jiggle it around a bit, we can get a reasonable fit. Especially on a hard surface. So what I would suggest we do first is just with these panel lines just make them a little bit deeper just before we start any work so that when we do do this when we do start the sanding we don't eradicate them completely. So we're just making uh, light passes with the Abbey tools or Abbey production subscriber. And then we're going to clean up these mating surfaces just to make sure that there's no mould seam lines or imperfections that could stop a perfect joint. test fit this. As you can see the fit is not that bad. So we're going to use some super glue just to hold this in place. So the super glue started to bite and we've got that in position so I've just quickly added some kicker or accelerator just to make sure that is fully dry. So 
just holding it hard against the cutting mat just to make sure it is straight and then what we can do is we can always add the other fuselage section just to pinch it in and make sure which it's great so now we just need to work on this seam it's just so we don't destroy too much of the surrounding plastic or any surface detail that we want to keep so this is a nice area to be working on and then using one of our skinny sanders we're just going to quickly run over the surface of the model very lightly and then we're going to turn it over with the sponge side and just start working on that joint to blend that fuselage in now the panel lines don't really match and we're just going to go to a wider area just to make sure that we've not created a depression in the plastic and we're just going to re revisit these panel lines just to make sure that we don't sand them away so we're just blending the contours in don't forget it's easier to rescribe panel lines that are there than it is to create them once they've disappeared We've still got a bit of a lip there. Um, just coming in with a slightly newer skinny uh, sanding sponge, just that's a bit coarser, just to try and take the height out of that seam. And you can see that the panel lines on there don't really match. But we have got a reasonable join there now. So I'll just work on this a little bit more. And then once we've got the fuselage halves together, we can revisit this and work on it as part of the preparation for primer. Now this is going to be in a natural metal finish. So it's really important that we get the work done up to a really good standard. Otherwise it's going to show all our sanding marks and fingerprints and everything. So it's worth spending some time on this. So I've just quickly glued the starboard side with super glue. I haven't worked on the joint yet. And as we can see there is a bit of a spring in the spine. So we are going to need some filler on the upper and lower surfaces but hopefully the side of the airframe that's really visible apart from the step on this port side is not going to be too bad. The fuselage does seem to be warped and it wants to pull out at the front as well as the rear but hopefully by the time we've got all the cockpit tub and everything in place that will rectify itself along um, the build process. So as you can see we've got both tail ends on we've still got some dropping panels to put in at the nose so we've got both tails on now, taking a look at the instruction booklet, it would appear that the cockpit tub can be inserted after the fuselage halves are joined together. And it may be a case that we can fit the intake assembly here in after as well. So I'm just going to investigate that and it may be that we can join the fuselage halves together at this point. So we can't actually add this intake before the fuselage halves are joined together. So what we're going to do is just going to build this up and add it into the nose of the aircraft and it's hopefully going to add some structure to this because the fuselage halves are quite warped. So with a bit of work we've now got the fuselage halves together and we've clamped that in place to try and correct the warpage. We have got a bit of a nasty seam to fill on the underneath but in all fairness it's underneath and when we get the wing in 
that will take care of itself and we'll just put a bit of filler in there and bring it all together. We've got a little bit of a step on the spine which again we can now work with just to build up some rigidity in there and then we're not breaking the parts off and we'll put a bead of Mr. Surface along there and just tidy it all up with a quick bit of rescribing. The nose is together, everything does fit. We tried the dropping panels around the intake and they're more or less perfect so we have got everything in alignment but it all needs painting interior green before we join it up. So I've been doing some work to our P40 just off camera. It's just all the boring, uninteresting bits. And you can see from the chaos on the workbench that we're actually progressing quite well. So first up the fuselage, we've filled some of the errors and the poor fit of the kit. We've just used some Mr. Surface around that tail section and underneath. And that's going to be left now to dry fully, uh, probably overnight or at least until the next bench session. However, while you're waiting for stuff like this, it doesn't mean your build's got to stop. So we've painted up all the interior green cockpit parts and we've just made a start on the cockpit floor just doing some detail painting, sort of knobs and levers. Painted the instrument panel which is quite well detailed. I don't know if the camera will focus on that. Some more cockpit sidewall parts. We've glued the rudder together. And we've made a start on the wings. So the wings are very modular again. With all lots of drops, drop in panels. So fortunately this panel is a very good fit and just pushes in from the outside. The wheel well, the instruction books say to secure it to this part or the top wing section where it's actually better to do it to this bit. And then we've got a dropping panel for the cannon arrangement and we've got an end cap there as well for the undercarriage. So a lot going on with the wings. So that's where we're up to at the moment, so I'll just go through construction of the port wing with you and just show you the pitfalls that are waiting and the poor fitter parts that we're encountering again with the wing section. So let's take a look at assembling the wings on these P40 kits. And the biggest criticism I've heard is that this gun insert uh, doesn't really fit. Well, it does, it's quite a good fit, but it's how you prepare the wing and mate it together. As you can see, I've added this to that side, and there's only a trace of the seam left. All in all, just going to be a tiny bit of filler in here, just to make sure that this part of the landing gear cover is straight. All in all, a good job. So, first thing we're going to do is add the insert. And this is just simply a push fit from the outside into the recess on the wing. Keep it in place and add your glue from the inside. And then just light finger pressure just around the part when that glue starts to bite to hold that panel in place. And then the next bit we're going to add is the wheel well. So again, make sure this is seated correctly, otherwise it will affect the fit of the upper wing. And again, tell me a quick set liberally around the part. 
we don't want this breaking free at any time after the build. And so far so good. Now the next bit we need to make sure is that these mating surfaces are smooth and blemish free. And what we're looking for is this join here to be absolutely perfect. If you don't get this joint absolutely bang on, then it does indeed affect the fit of the cannon part recess insert, like so. So we're just test fitting this upper wing section just to make sure that we, we can get a really good fit. And this is where the problem, I think, manifests itself for those that have experienced problems with these wings. And not making sure that the parts do actually go together fully. And that one wants to keep rocking around a little bit. So there's nothing actually stopping it from going into its location. But we'll just give... Bit of a clean up. And I think we're there with that. The fit of that leading edge is now quite nice. So we'll uh, start by gluing the inboard edge and then working our way along the leading edge of the wing. Just holding it there using light finger pressure just until the glue starts to bite. So with the glue dry on the wing we're just offering the insert up and we're just going to get it absolutely perfect with the upper surface of the wing as this is the one that's going to be most visible and then we're just going to put in some liquid glue and we're just going to tweak the final position and then we're going to leave that to dry thoroughly, and I mean thoroughly dry not just an hour or two because what will happen is when we start sanding this plastic if the glue is still soft or the plastic still soft then it's just going to tear and it's not going to give us that nice blended look as we got on the other side. So with the wing now sat aside to dry in we can turn our attention back to the fuselage and we're going to start work on correcting some of these fit issues that we experienced earlier on. So we'll work on the underneath. This Mr. Surface is now dry. So we're going to start with Flory Models medium sanding sponge weather and stick. And we're just going to work this filler. And we're not pressing down because we don't want to tear it, but we don't want to sand the filler away either. So we're just going to keep going until we've got that perfect surface. As you can see the filler starting to come away and it's being left in the low points. So 
So there was only just a very faint trace of a seam there, but that is now satisfactorily filled. And all we have to do to this is now just reinstate this panel line. So with the undersurface there now completed, we'll move to the under surface of the intake at the front. And again, we're just going to rub that very, very gently. There's no real pressure being put on the sander, it's just letting that sander do the work. Now I'm in danger of losing a little bit of the detail there. So we'll get some masking tape just to protect those areas that are now getting a little bit shallow because it's some hatches and recesses which I don't really want to have to rescribe. So that just gives us a little bit of an area just to work to and we'll work lengthways along this seam I think. skinny so like I mentioned earlier on in the video this is going to be an unnatural metal finish so we do need to take our time and care at this part of the build because if we've got any sort of scratches in the plastic they will be magnified under that metal finish it's going to look a mess so surface preparation is absolutely paramount so we've just got that last little bit to do that, just keep the area clean that you're working on. So with that area now satisfactorily filled, we've got a very fine line of filler down that seam. You can see it as a paler section to the plastic. We're now going to use Flory Models weathering sander and polisher. And we're just going to polish this plastic up first with the green side. and then with the white side. Like so. And that's our repair work done. So let's have a look at these fuselage sides now. So again, we don't want to come in with anything that's too rough. So we're going to use the skinny again and we're just going to start by reducing the filler. been plugging away a little bit at this build off camera nothing much to really report so we have the tail planes and the rudder on no fuss single piece items fit quite well we fit the area behind the canopy 
we've secured the cockpit, finished painting that up and secured it in place and we're just test fitting the wings now I think this is going to be a nightmare to try and get these wings on so there's quite a few fit issues so first of all what we've done is we've just dry fitted the fuselage and I think we're going to have to work in sections so this part of the fuselage here seems to be pinched in so just be careful when you're gluing that intake in way back in step one that you don't clamp the fuselage too tight but saying that the intake ring fits the rear the wing wants to sort of tilt slightly at an angle which means there's gaps and as you can see the wing root is not that clever so it's just taped in place at the moment so how do we rectify wing roots and fit areas where you really don't want to be filling too much into these areas so we can use spreader bars to just pinch the fuselage out slightly and in this instance I've got a couple of cocktail sticks just cut down to shape and length and they've been super glued in place and what's that that's doing is teasing the fuselage out to try and close the gap we've just got to make sure as well that when we do fit the cockpit and we glue it in place that we don't clamp the fuselage too tight because that's going to make the situation even worse so the cockpit's come up quite nice once it's painted you can see in there and all the filling and sanding is done so it's at this point we're now going to join these wings so I think what we're going to do first is we're going to look at this rear section just up to this point here and we're going to put some glue in there and we're going to leave it to dry we're going to leave it to dry thoroughly so that the bond is strong and then we're going to work in stages around the, the airframe so once we've got this section in and glued in place we'll then look at this nose section and get this all lined up and finally we'll deal with those gaps in the wing root so we're going to use Tamiya white top this time because we want a little bit of a longer drain time and we're just going to work on this nose section first so we're just putting some glue on these parts and these are going to be our bits that we have to get perfect so it's the fillet from the under fuselage and we're going to offer the wing in to offer this wing up clip it in place making sure it engages with the keys in the fuselage which it has and what we're now going to do is bound this rear area with masking tape quite tightly I'm going to pull it really quite tight sure everything is perfect which it is and then we're going to turn our attention to these areas here and the wing root if you can see and this needs to be perfect join as this makes sure that the wing is actually straight and again we're coming in with a piece of masking tape and we're going to bond that quite tightly in place and then we're just going to check that we haven't got any significant movement and we're going to leave that to dry so as you can see the wing root is already looking slightly better and when we do the old masking tape wing tip to wing tip trick we shall be able to close that gap up significantly probably to the stage where we're not going to need that much 
not in the way of any filler. So our wings are on. I've employed the wingtip to wingtip masking tape trick just to close the gap up and provide the correct angle of uh, dihedral. So it's important at this point that we just check that the wings and everything are level, which they are. And the only filler that I can see that we've needed is a good helping of Mr. Surfacer just in that uh, port side wing route. So I think we'll conclude part one at this point. So thank you for following along so far and join me for part two. So until next time, please stay well, look after yourselves and take care.